This is your freshman orientation video to be seen during your advisory classes. When you first walk into our library, this you will computer see our here is desk. where we will scan in your ID so that we know that you are here if you come on a pass for class. In this area is where you will check out a book. The upper library has the reference section and it also has several areas for students to sit, relax, In the and lower read. level, we have many graphic novels. They're in a nice little with lots of corner. seating for you to relax. Over on the opposite wall is the fiction and behind me are computers for classroom use or use when you're here on a pass. These computers are hardwired right to our internet so it's not a wireless connection. If you're doing projects that are bigger like Movie Maker, anything with music, PowerPoints, you might want to use our computers because they are faster and it is easier to do large files and download and edit videos on these computers. This room is the reading counts room. This is most students favorite room. As you can see there are th hundreds of books, thousands actually. They are all by different genres and they're organized so you can find them that way. And there are also little tabs these help you find books that you might be interested in. That would be a good way to find a book if you are struggling. We'll start doing the freshman orientation worksheet. I'm Miss Thompson. Uh, there are two other librarians that work in the library, Mr. Gray and Mr. Jones. We also have a circulation clerk, Miss Finney. Miss Tate is our secretary. The library has a lot of things to offer you. There's a lot of times you can come to do various things. It's not just about reading, checking out books. You can do homework. You can use our computers. Some people even come and play games. Um, but we do have just general rules that you need to follow in the library when you're here. So I'd like to go over those. Number one um, rule in the media center is follow directions. So if you're asked to move, if you're asked to help us maybe in some way, maybe help another student with something. If you could do that, that would really help us out tremendously. Number two, you want to be in the library when the bell rings. Some of you will have the opportunity to sign up to come during advisory or lunch. You can't be late, okay? Just because you're not going to your advisory or not going to your lunch doesn't mean you have extra time in the hallway or bathroom. You need to come here first and get your attendance taken so that we know where you're at at all times. The third rule of the library is you need to be respectful in your words and actions. Um, there's going to be a lot of people coming in and out of the library. Sometimes there's classes. Sometimes you're going to be coming in from a pass. You don't want to be waving to people you know um, and disrupting another class. If you're sitting next to somebody that you um, like or don't like, you don't need to hit them or poke them or touch them. You, you need to stay in your space and do your thing and everybody will have a more pleasant experience when they're in the library that way. The fourth rule um, pertains to you if you come to the library on a pass. You can use cell phones in our school. Some teachers let you use the cell phones in the classroom, some don't. When you are on a pass from your class, we will not allow you to use your cell phone in the library, okay? So if you're coming from a class, then your teacher is having you finish an assignment and you need to get to work, finish that assignment. If you have trouble finding something or you forgot something in class, ask somebody for help. We can email your teacher for you. Uh, we can send you back to class to get what you need. But you need to make sure that you have all the materials that you need to complete your you assignment when you, you arrive. should have whatever you need for your assignment. And number five, uh, there's no gum, no candy, no grooming. You shouldn't be putting on perfume, brushing your hair, putting on makeup. Um, it distracts a lot of people and hairspray, perfume, lotion have different scents. People have asthma, allergies. It's just not a good practice. Those are things that you should be doing in the restroom. And then, of course, there is no food or drink. So you can't eat in the library. 
Uh, it causes a lot of mess, especially if you're on the computer and you're eating and your fingers get all sticky. It's very gross. So we try to keep everything neat so that you would want to come back here. I don't think you would want to use a computer after somebody had put Cheeto crumbs all over it and spilled pop on it. So we want to keep everything neat so that you have an enjoyable experience when you're here. Okay, so I'm going to start on the worksheet now. We are in the reference center actually right now in the upper library. And we're on number one. When can you come into the media center? So 1A, you can come on a pass. So you can come from an academic class your teacher can give you a pass, so if you're in math class or English class or a support class, your teacher can give you a pass and you can come here. 1B, you can sign up to come during your advisory or your lunch. So instead of going to lunch, you can come to the library. Instead of going to advisory, you can come to the library. 1C, you can come before or after school. We open at 7.15 in the morning and we close at 4.10 in the afternoon. So if you're a freshman, you have about five minutes to um, sign up to come to the library during lunch or advisory, but you really don't have time to do any assignments. But after school, you guys get out at 3.15, we're open until 4.10, you have about an hour to do any assignments or meet with people and collaborate and do projects. 1D, you can also come with a class. Your teacher may be bringing you as a whole class to do a specific assignment, get some instruction, so you will be um, coming during your actual class time. Number two, what is the procedure for going to the library instead of going to advisory? 2A, first you should check with your advisory teacher to make sure that they're not having uh, a lesson that day. Some, some advisory teachers will tell you at the beginning of the year, on Mondays and Wednesdays, you need to be in advisory because those are the days that we have things scheduled. If you need to go to another teacher, if you need to go to the library, you can do that on Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. They might tell you that at the beginning of the year, and then you don't have to check with them. There are other advisory teachers that would prefer that you check with them the day before. So if you want to go to the library on Tuesday, on Monday, ask your advisory teacher, hey, Mr. Ficaro, can I go to the library? Um, on tomorrow, Tuesday, during advisory, and they'll say yes. They just need to know that you're going to be there. 2A is check with your advisory teacher. 2B, you need to sign up before or after school. We have these binders that are going to be at the circulation desk. The binder has, on the outside, it has the period, so it's fourth period, fifth period, sixth period, all the periods of the day. And then inside the binder are the sheets where you're going to use to sign up. So it has the date and it has the period 5A and on the bottom it has the 5B period. You can either sign up for both if you don't want to go to lunch or you could sign up for just one if you just want to come here for advisory or if you just want to come here for lunch. You would sign up for the time that you are scheduled for that. And then to see, most importantly, you're not going to go to your advisory that day. So if you signed up for Wednesday to come here, you're not going to go to advisory first and say, hey, I'm going to go to the library. You're going to come right here to the library. Okay? We take attendance here. That sheet that I just showed you, we check off that you actually showed up. So your advisory teacher knows that you did come. So you can't ditch and say, oh, I signed up for the library and I was at the library. No, if you didn't check in at the desk and come on time, then you um, are, are not accounted for. Okay, number three. What must you do when you enter the media center if a teacher sends you on a pass from class? Okay, so now you're in an academic class. And by the way, an advisory teacher cannot send you on a pass. That's why you have to sign up. We have a certain amount of spaces, depending on how many classes we have. Actually, we allow teachers, academic teachers, to send four students on a pass from class. What you to do for 3A is you're going to stop at the desk. 
So you're going to walk into the library, you're going to stop at the desk, you're going to talk to whoever's there, and they will check your pass. So 3A, stop at the desk and give somebody your pass. 3B, you're going to scan your ID. There's a little scanner. That shows what time you came in. And when you leave, you'll scan out, so it shows what time you, you left. If your teacher has a question about how long you were in the library, if you stayed the whole period, then we can answer those questions. So you're going to scan in so that we know you showed up. And then 3C, you'll either take a seat wherever we direct you, or you can go downstairs and check out a book if that's what you need to do. So number four, what must you have to check out a book? You need to have your ID, and you should be wearing your ID anyway, so that shouldn't be a big deal. Number five, where do you return books? There's a slot in the desk where you scan in. You just return the books in that little slot, so slot in the desk. Number six, do you have to return your books on time? Yes. Why do you think so? Well, a lot of our books are really popular teen books. Um, we have a lot of graphic novels, and if you keep the books long overdue, then other students can't have them. So we want you to return your books on time so other Number people can Number seven. Get them. How will you know if your books are overdue? A. First we put a due date card in the book. So this book, for instance, is due August 19th, 2015. If you do not notice the due date card or you forget about it, an overdue notice will be sent to your English class. So 7B, an overdue notice is sent to your English class. All right, number eight, how much are fines? Fines are five cents a day. Um, we have not raised our fines in probably 25 years. So most libraries are charging 25 cents a day for books. We still charge five. And we do not charge for weekends, and we don't charge for holidays that were closed. So for spring break, you do not get charged for any overdue fines over spring break. You don't get charged on Martin Luther King's birthday. So you only get charged five cents a day for books during school days if they're overdue. Number nine, where are the current issues of magazines kept? They are kept up here in the reference area. They are um, by the, there's a little set of chairs and a couch, so it's a nice little seating area. If you are bored and you don't know what to do, you can sit and read a mag. Number 10, how much does it cost to buy a poster board? Poster board is a dollar and it's for any color. So we have a variety of colors, blue, yellow, green, red, and white. They are all a dollar. Number 11, um, this is a part about the computers. Uh, we have new computers in the library this year, so easier for you to do what you need to do, especially if you're working with things, like I mentioned earlier, that have big files. So it is faster to use our computers in, in the library. So number 11, though, you need to use the computers for schoolwork. So you shouldn't be on eBay or YouTube or sports, ESPN. You need to be number doing 12. schoolwork. Okay. Can you stream music online? No. If you have your phone that has music already downloaded on it, you can listen to that and that's fine. But we don't want you plugging your phones in, downloading music, streaming music, because it takes up bandwidth and then it slows everything down. Can you play games on the library computers? No. So you can't come in and just go on some game you found online. If it's an educational game, like the teacher, there's some physics games, there's some math games, teachers actually assign you to do those, yes, those are permitted, of course. You're learning, you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. But if you're playing um, pitfall, I'm really old, um, or number 14, you can't do What is the policy about gum and candy in the media center? You should not have any gum or candy in the media center. Like I mentioned earlier about food and drink, we don't want sticky pieces of gum and candy all over the place. Um, it just makes for a very icky environment that number 15, you would want to be in. What are the rules in the library after school? 
So 15A, they're the same as during the day. They're the same things I went over with being respectful, following directions, you know, gum, candy, all that. B, you need to do your schoolwork quietly. You're going to probably be collaborating. This is an opportunity for you to get together with team members, classmates, people from other classes to complete an assignment. We understand that. You know, if you could sit at a table and quietly work on what you need to be working on, that's fantastic. Um, if you get loud and rowdy and obnoxious, that's a different story. 15C, this is kind of cool. We have a lot of kids that come after school and they like to play games. And I don't think it's Dungeons and Dragons, but it's other like card games, or we actually have some Mancala games or other board games. You are more than welcome to use the library to do that after school. There's quite a few students who like to do that. They meet after school, they, they, they have this game all set up, and they do that, and again, they're quiet at the table. This year we are asking that there is no audiences watching students play games. So if you want to play a game at a table, you need to play the game. You can't be watching other people play the game. Because what happens is people start getting, again, rowdy or cheating, and then the people that are playing the game are distracted. It causes all kinds of problems that we would like to avoid. So you're welcome to come in, use our space. You just have to actually be participating in the game rather than watching and commenting. So those are our rules and procedures for coming to the library. The other thing I want to add are some of the great things that we have going on in our library. We have a book club. It meets once a month. They'll watch the announcements. We'll be meeting um, in, at the end of August sometime to get the first book and start deciding on books for the rest of the school year. We are going to have um, a craft cart. So if you want to come during your advisory or study hall and you want to work on crafts, we're going to have a different craft of the month with a recipe and all the things that you need to make that will be on the cart. And it'll be like do-it-yourself kind of thing. Now, no instruction. If you want to do it, you can do it. If you don't, you don't have to. We also have other programming that is offered throughout the year. It's during your advisory time, lunch time and some of the stuff is after school. We have all kinds of different opportunities and things for you to explore and see if it's something that you would enjoy doing. So take advantage of that. Make sure you talk to all the librarians, see their different input on things. Uh, you'll be doing a lot with careers over the next four years. You wanna think about, well, what do you wanna do? What field do I wanna go into? You don't know that right now. You may not know that by the time you're a junior. But the more opportunities you have to check different things that interest you, the better it is to do now. So take advantage of all the different programs we have to learn about different things, even if you don't think you would like it. Come and see if it's something you're interested in. You might find that you do enjoy it. We look forward to seeing you, helping you, and we love having you in our library. So. There is one other link you may want to know about on the JT Learn page. It's under Student Resources, Central Library. As you scroll down on the right hand side of the screen, there are helpful video tutorials. There's one called Saving to OneDrive. I suggest you watch this so that you know how to use your OneDrive account and save to the cloud. That is a very helpful video for you. Thank you.